So today we're going to look at the Eve Room. This is an Elgato product again, and this is a um, it's a multi sensor, right? So this is a product that is supposed to just measure the quality of the room that it's in. And this will do things like this will do humidity, this will do temperature, this will do VOC, volatile organic compounds. So this is kind of a multi-sensor that you can use to learn about your environment, learn about your house, and kind of get more information and potentially make your, your space more livable based on that information. So you can see here, we do have the Apple HomeKit logo. Again, if you're going to be in the HomeKit ecosystem and you're looking at products, make sure you look for that logo. Make sure that you understand if the vendor really has gone through the Apple certification process and you're not going to spend weeks, months, sometimes years, sometimes never in waiting for that support to get there. So again, this has got uh, volatile organic compound, humidity and temperature, um, VOC, something I didn't know a lot about. and um, Google that one. That's uh, a, a lot of information, uh, interesting information to see what you might actually be breathing in your space. It's uh, kind of crazy, actually. So we're going to open up the box here. So I'm having a little bit of trouble getting into this box, which I actually like. I like things that are packed and tight, and I like to know that these weren't bouncing around because these do have electronics in them. So the first thing is, is we've got our home kit on nice little card on the side there, which is nice. Um, you can throw away the box if you want to. Also got the home kit logo directly on here. This is unlike the iHome, this is actually battery operated and believe it or not, inside the box here, Elgato has included the batteries for us. This is amazing. When do you see this anymore? Batteries actually included. So the Elgato Eve Room is also a Bluetooth device. So this is not Wi-Fi, which has the advantage that you're not going to have any issues with your Wi-Fi network. You're not going to have to worry about disassociating any of those kinds of things, right? So that's one thing that's great about these. The disadvantage is you've got the range constraint, the range issue of Bluetooth. So you're going to have to make sure that this is within range of your Apple TV Gen 4 or 4K or your iPad that's acting as the home hub. Of course, if your phone is close to it, that'll work too. So again, just be aware of that. Um, no way to mount this, but could you use some 3M tape? And also be aware if you have this uh, temperature settings, that could vary from the top of the room to the bottom of the room. So we just kind of got to play around with this to make sure you get a good reading on this. So let's go over to the, to the iPad, to the home app, add this in, and we're going to see what this looks like from the app experience. So we're going to flip over here to the iPad app and we're going to um, add a new accessory. So we're just going to tap on the plus add accessory and we're going to find the Eve room. There it is. Of course, the batteries are in, so it's going to be instantly available. It's broadcasting. We're going to grab the home kit code as we always do. And then we're going to pair the device and this should come up fairly quickly. It may take a little bit longer depending on um, a whole bunch of factors. There we are, there's the accessory, and we're gonna choose which room we put it in. There we go, master bedroom. So one thing that we need to be aware of here is that the within HomeKit, the namespace, single namespace, and what that means is you cannot have something named, um, two things, two objects named the same thing. So you're gonna get something like this could not complete operation. Right? Not, not necessarily the best uh, error message. So I found this out by trying to type this in a couple of times. Could not complete operation. Well, that's kind of strange, right? So we're going to click on um, done here. And we're going to go over to the rooms itself. And I put it in the master bedroom. And we're going to see if this actually appeared over in the master bedroom. So the nice thing is, is the main unit is um, as soon as you put it in one, obviously the sensors are part of the same unit. They all go together. So uh, Master Eve Bedroom, there we go. Air quality is there. We could go over to the Eve Elgato um, Eve app if we want. We can get a more, little more information here. We'll do a little bit of, more of a tour around this. But we can go down to the Master Bedroom and just verify that this is here. I always like to go over to the Vendors app as soon as I add a new, a new accessory just for the off chance that there was a, um, a new firmware released. Right, so there is not a, a new firmware at least at this time, but we expect one soon. 
Elgato did verify that in the iOS 11 release, shortly after the iOS 11 release, there was a bunch of Bluetooth enhancements. So we do expect to see a new, um, a new firmware for these soon. We've also got the humidity, and then right beside that, you can see the temperature setting. Right, so this is uh, exactly what you would expect. It's got humidity, the air quality, which is excellent right now. Love to see that, and the temperature. So let's now go over to the Elgato Eve app and take a little more in-depth look over there. So here we are over on the Elgato Eve application directly on the iPad. Now you can see here we're looking at the Eve room. We can um, go in and look at the settings so you can go in and create the different home kit names in here for the specific sensors. Again, the, this gets exposed, even though it's a single unit, as three different sensors. And then we can also go in and look like the manufacturer, firmware number, serial number, those kinds of things. Um, it, it's all in here, right? So it's all the things that you would expect. So when things start to get a little interesting is you can start to see the humidity and the temperature and the air quality. Um, tells you a lot of things about your space that you never maybe never really thought about before. So we can go into air quality here and really get an idea based on hour, day, week, month, all that information. And this device does actually keep the historical data. So you can go back in time um, and all this historical data is not available within the home app, right? So you do have to go into the Eve um, application to be able to really get access to all this data. So you can go in, again, look at day, you can see spikes, you can see there is something going on here. Maybe you know why that is, maybe you don't. Maybe it's allergy season, maybe there's something else going on, maybe there's construction. Um, there could be a whole bunch of reasons. So the first thing to figuring out what those reasons may be, because this is the air that you're breathing, right? This may be, you know, just, hey, is there even a problem? So you've got um, the ability to compare. I don't know what the compare does, the measurements, so when you go into measurements, you can actually see there's 144 measurements a day, so every 10 minutes. And what's really cool, what I really like about this is you can actually, you can delete them if you want, but even better, you can export that data out. The export comes in a native Microsoft Excel file, so you should be able to open this in just about any spreadsheet, whether you're using numbers on your Mac or using actually Excel. Um, open office, whatever, you should be able to get access to this. And all the information, timestamp, as well as the air quality measurement is there. Um, of course, you can also get that same data for the temperature, for the humidity, right? So you can track all these things. You could pull them all together. You could correlate that data, pull it into a um, an external program and do a whole bunch of interesting things with this. So for me, this is pretty interesting. So you can start to see you know, maybe your air quality goes bad and there is a direct relationship between that and your, um, and, and something, some event that happens in your life, maybe temperature, right? Uh, I've got another one of these actually in my basement. I had a, a flood recently and um, there was some construction going on. And what's kind of cool is I can actually see directly the event that that happened here. I went in and I'm like, okay, well, there's construction, there's dust in the air. So I decided I was going to open a window. Anyone want to guess when exactly I opened that window? Right? If you have to guess on it, we can go look at the temperature as well. And this might give you a better, uh, better clue. Right? So you've got all this information at hand. This is why I really like the Elgato Eve sensors. So the last thing that we're going to look at here is we're going to look at setting up an automation based on these. Because as, as I've said in some other videos, the Elgato Eve, um, the air quality, the humidity, they don't always get exposed. I think the air quality and humidity don't get exposed within the native Apple Home app. So we're going to have to create some new scenes, uh, potentially, or, or I could just reuse a scene, um, maybe create a new rule. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that here. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the scenes and make sure that you've got a scene that's going to do what you want, which in my case is I just want to turn the air purifier on. That's what I'm concerned with. Power goes on, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna now go over to the rules and we're going to set up a new trigger that when the air quality goes below good, so if it's, it's good or inferior or poor or um, fair, anything below good, I wanna turn the air, air purifier on. So what this is gonna do is I've got an analog air purifier and 
I want to turn it on using the power socket. So all I'm really doing is turning power socket on. So the first thing I'm going to say, I want a value trigger. We're going to go down to the master bedroom. I'm going to go find the air quality sensor there. And again, I've got a few other sensors in here, so let's make sure we get the right one. So there we have air quality. Trigger value is going to be a specific. So I want to say that this is anything that's worse than good is when I want to turn my the air purifier on. I want to create that scene, right? And that's important. I don't want to wait till the air gets really, really bad. This is the master bedroom, right? I could be sleeping when this is happening. So I'm going to go, okay, good. So this is the master bedroom. When the air quality is anything less than good, I want to go and I want to turn on the air purifier. There we go. And I'm going to name this something, This the, the rule here, something that makes sense. So this master bedroom air quality um, automation. Let's call that automation. And we have successfully set this up. So it's pretty easy to see how this, this can work. And, and again, this is all about improving your environment learning about your environment, learning about your house, what's going on inside it. Maybe you've got kids with respiratory issues. Maybe you want to um, just investigate what exactly is causing them to have breathing issues or you to have breathing issues, All right? So this is just another way to use, you make your, your home a little smarter. Um, another product that you can add into your toolkit. Um, I've got a few of these. There are other products that do this as well from um, Netatmo. There's the laser egg. So we're going to try to do some uh, reviews on those. In the upcoming weeks. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Any questions, feel free to post below. Um, feel free to give me a thumbs up, like, all that stuff is good. Helps. See you soon.